The first minute and 12 seconds of this is going to be the same as the last tutorial, as I can't think of another way to tell you how to download the add-ons. In the last tutorial, we squat between different models for the nine mouth shapes. This time, we will tween between them using shape keys. Okay, so uh, first you want to download Rhubarb Lip Sync. In the description. And you want to unzip the file and remember where you put it. You next want to download the Blender add-on, Rhubarb Lip Sync for Blender. Link in the description. And then you want to boot up Blender and install this add-on by going to File menu, user preferences, add-on, install the file, double click the file, tick the tick box. And use this to find the Rhubarb folder you've created earlier and find the Rhubarb XE or whatever the equivalent is for your operating system. Save. You can also download the files used for this tutorial. Okay, this is the file I provided pipes before. We're running at 720p because this is a cheap computer friendly tutorial. And the first thing we want to do is where it says no sync here, we want to select AV sync. So it plays with the audio and the video in sync with each other. I don't know why that's not a default to be honest. Right, next thing to do, we're gonna go to layer two. Or if we're using Blender 2.8, we can swap this to the uh, outliner. And then we can turn on collection two and turn off collection one. And well, I'm going to swap that back to the UV image editor again. And I'm just going to zoom in with the middle mouse button rolling it. And if we roll down here, we uh, if we select this object with the with the right mouse button and uh, we roll down here, we see that we have a selection of shape keys. These don't match one-to-one -one with these shapes here. I'm going to use the middle mouse button to roll out here. But I think you can see that using all of these six shape keys, we can get all of these nine shapes. I mean, the place where it doesn't match up is this one, where to get both that one and that one, we'll have this right there and there. You get the general idea. So, right, uh, hold shift, middle mouse button, drag drag. Rhubarb runs with a pose library and a pose library is an armature thing. Unfortunately we can't have a pose library of shape keys more than the pity. So what we're going to have to do is is create an armature and then we're going to have to set up drivers that control these shape keys. So uh, this armature is going to be one that starts with shift A a single bone tab into edit mode, drag to being small, also uh, right click to select, uh, you know what, I'm going to say, change it to a stick, and note I'm on armature buttons there, and I'm going to change this to names, rolling in with the middle mouse button zooming in, and I'm going to move that up. we're going to have six of these for the six um, shape keys, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, I managed to position that one just right. What are the chances? This one is going to be called etc. And the rest of them are going to be named after the other shape keys, which I've done so many takes getting this right. I think I can actually remember. Otherwise you can always, you know, um, tab out and check this as you go along. You know how these bones are going upwards, yeah? Um, yeah, if you have them going in a different direction, when you come to use them as sliders, you're going to have to push them in a different direction. If I go to local, well, that's Y and that X. <laughs> deciding to name these after the sound rather than the arbitrary letter that rhubarb lip sync uses you can basically do it either way uh, and on the other one I use the arbitrary letter right so I now right click to select this um, thingy and we go to the oh it's called data object data 
Um, it looks mesh-like though, so I'll continue to call it mesh. And this is where we set up the drivers. And we do it by like right-clicking this number next to each of these. And I'm just going to quickly do it this way. Add driver. And each time I set manually create later bracket single. So I'm just right-clicking each of them. I mean, we could use that control D, but I've kind of got into a rhythm of this that I can actually continue a sentence while doing it. So I think I may as well continue it this way and drag that up there. And we're going to swap this for a graph editor. And rather than F curve here, we select drivers. I'm not going to cut this in, but if you're using uh, Blender 2.8, there's actually a separate drivers thing here. Okay, cool. And plus button there. And we've now we've got a list of all the drivers pop up here. So if we select the first one by clicking it, as you might expect, and we'll go for this driver tab, Let's drag this up a bit. I think it deserves a little bit more space. I mean, we've got a whole lot of vertical stuff here we could be looking at. Right, so rather than just scroll that up and down for a bit. Right, this has already got a variable in called var. That's its default variable, but it's not actually attached to anything. We want to attach it to this armature object. So I can press this uh, eyedropper and click armature. And the bone we want to collect, connect it to what's this is the etc one isn't it so we want to connect it to the bone etc and x location that's fine but we want it to be in local space and now scripted express scripted expression we could write it as an scripted expression i could write var that's a very short script it basically means this variable called var or should it be var, short for variable? Because it's quite clearly the first three letters of variable that you're using, but it, blah, it didn't pronounce the same way. And now if we grab this, I mean, it's not super, super obvious because we're tweening between a, um, well, a shut mouth and a mouth that's showing the teeth. It's not super dramatic change, but I think you can see that there is a difference there. And I'm now just going to press Alt-G to grab. Now we get to do the same for each of them. There are add-ons that will speed up this process, but I'll probably carry on until I've run out of things to say and then do a time lapse. So the second one, a object. Well, we know it's called armature, don't we? So that might do that. And that's that one. And again, change it to local space. And rather than a scripted expression, I'm going to make this a minimum value. I mean, if you had multiple variables here, a minimum value would actually make sense. It would be whichever of them is smallest. However, with minimum value of one, well, it's quite clearly that one, isn't it? So right now, if I grab this, it doesn't really matter if I grab it up and down, but I'll choose to use that arrow. And also I use Alt G. When we set up the keys in a moment, it is actually important that these, well, if I push this to the left, it's not changing the shape of the mouth anymore. Also, same if I push it too far to the right, it doesn't go beyond that. Only works between zero and one because that's how the shape key is set up. We could set up the shape key to go to minus one or plus two or whatever. But the fact that it only works in that range does mean that we actually, when we come to set keys for the pose library later on, we do actually want them to be at zero and one, not at minus 10 and plus 30. The reason for that is because then when it tweens between the keys, it'll actually tween between here and here. It won't tween between here all the way and then it only actually starts moving till it goes and then all the way up here. So basically we'd be almost cutting between shots because the because of how it's tweened, it's all the way over the left or over the right. Right, I think I've explained that, that I might have made more sense to do while I was doing the uh, pose library section. Where are we up to? O, and we need to go to O now. Again, var, armature, local space, bone is O. Maximum value this time. One thing I have found out is you do actually have to say change this after setting up the variable, which kind of you would think it doesn't make sense. But I think it has to like 
load something in. So it's always best to set the variable setup first and then go to like minimum value or whatever it is. Now I've done O and W, that one's working and so is that and use A to select all, or grab. You can use A to select all because there are only these six bones in the armature. If you were setting up a more complicated puppet of like a full human, even a cartoony one, you may want these to be part of the character's other armature, in which case, when you're returning the face to its original shape, you might want to use C, circle select, and select them all that way and then use alt g alt grab so that you're not um unposing the entire rest of the person where was i i think i just done w <laughs> oh you see there what i've done is i've got world space and it needs to be local space Okay, so now to create a pose library. Pose libo one because this is the second take for this bit. And first of all, well. It, I need, want to make sure I have all of these selected, which I'm going to use C, Circle Select, and select them all that way. And then I'm going to press the plus, because this is the shape for this one. Mm and now this one. In fact, I'm going to be quite exact here. I'm going to set this location to 1. And then C circle select, select a lot of them. And it's called it, etc. Because it's basically the name of all of the consonants that aren't already listed here. And so now I want to Alt G to move them back to their original positions. And this one, actually I shouldn't have Alt G that, uh, Control Z. And this one, is, that one's still up on the right, and this one's going to be about halfway. Eh, maybe a bit less. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So that's that one there. And add new. This is an E eh sound. I think that's an E eh rather than an E. So this one, we're just going to, with the mouse arrow over here, Alt G, and move this. In fact, I'm just going to set its exposition to 1. C, select all, this one's, I think I can feel a time lapse coming on. And so we now have poses for each of these, apart from that last one, rest. And now if I scroll down to the bottom of here, you have the rhubarb lick sync panel and we've just got to uh, use the drop down menu to put the appropriate one on each of them. So for this one, yeah, that same one, that's a shut mouth. And now we get to insert the sound file. And the, and the script, if you have written out the, the words that the person's saying in a text file, then include it here. If you haven't, don't bother. It will actually work without it. Just before I press run lip sync here, uh, I'm actually, let's set it to start at frame one, like the animation does. I'm just going to press this to go back to frame one and I'm just going to swap this for the video sequence editor and I'm going to press that button. Uh, because it's a video sequence editor there would be space here for a preview of the video editing in it. I'm going to edit this video in this very sequence editor. So I'm going to press that because I don't need to see a preview of the video. This is my preview. 
this 3D view here. But I am going to use this to add a sound file so I can preview it with audio within Blender and check that the lip sync is working to my satisfaction. So I'm going to go add. I'm going to add a sound. And where are we? We're in downloads voice file. And there it is. There's the voice file. If I can drag that down and I can press this little plus and roll down here and select draw waveform. I mean, none of this is essential, but I find that I like to be able to see that. I find it very, I find it handy if I'm actually animating the character to see that on one window or another. If I right click on the end of this, I see that it ends up frame 150. I'm going to set this to aim end at frame 150, the blend file. And now I'm going to run rhubarb lip sync. And you can tell it's working because apparently nothing's happening. And in fact it has. We've got little yellow lines popped up here. And if we go up to the graph editor, I was still on drivers and swap it back to F curve and press home again. We see that as we scroll down here, Rhubarb Lip Sync has worked and it's morphing between the various different shapes. Yippee! I designed this character so that you only have to animate the mouth, which is of course automated. I then gave him a voice so harsh that you would only want to hear him say about two sentences. And I throat wouldn't want any more either. <laughs>